Hello, uh, welcome to the DCU Business School Postgraduate Information Event. My name is Colm O'Gorman, I'm a Professor of Entrepreneurship, uh, but today I'm here in my capacity as the Executive Dean of the Business School in Dublin City University. Just for the next couple of minutes, I'd uh, just like to give you a few, uh, few of my thoughts on, on the Business School and tell you a little bit about us. Uh, today, this event is, is about you. Our goal today is to help you uh, as you plan out your career and to think about how one of our postgraduate programs might fit into your career plans. A postgraduate course is an investment of your time and resources into your career. Uh, with that, we're delighted uh, to have eight 15 minute talks today, which will give you an insight into our full time postgraduate offerings. And hopefully by the end, you'll have a clear idea of which course will help you to meet your own personal career goals. DCU Business School is an internationally recognized school accredited by international bodies such as AACSB uh, and AMBA, leading accreditation uh, bodies. This means we've undertaken a rigorous process to demonstrate we meet the highest standards in teaching, in research, and in student support. You come to DCU Business School knowing that we've met the, these high international standards uh, and that mark our quality, and then you begin your career with a firm educational footing that sets you apart. Yeah. Our, our programs also rank in Financial Times and uh, QS rankings. So recently, uh, the Times Higher Education World University ra rankings by subject ranked DCU Business School first uh, in Ireland for research impact. That means the research that we do in this school, uh, the faculty that teach on our programs that you're going to learn about this afternoon, uh, are influencing and shaping international debates and academic debates on topics, and they're leading uh, and our faculty are le leading those debates. The faculty you interact with during your programs are engaged internationally. They uh, research uh, and publish uh, with uh, collaborators from across the globe. Um, and many of them teach and spend time at leading schools across Europe, the US and further afield. Uh, a couple of specialities uh, or areas of strength in the school uh, include entrepreneurship, where one of my colleagues was recently ranked in the top 2% of scientists globally in that field uh, by a study by Stanford University and Azure Publishing. Uh, similarly, a colleague in uh, talent management was also ranked to top, in the top 2% of scientists globally uh, for his work in that field. And finally, uh, you're going to learn about uh, our finance program later. Uh, one of uh, my colleagues here, uh, Professor Shane Corbett, uh, was ranked in the top 1% globally uh, for research impact in, in finance. Okay, so that's just a couple of examples of how international and uh, the school is and the faculty are. You leave us uh, in terms of if, if, if you choose to do a program with us, equipped to analyze business problems and challenges, to think strategically. Uh, you should be empowered to solve business problems uh, creatively, creatively and to uh, act with conviction and confidence uh, in your own ability and uh, in organizations that you might choose to work in. This year, in reviewing our programs, uh, and particularly our postgraduate programs, we ensure that we address uh, two important areas uh, that our industry advisory board members, which are made up of uh, international uh, and national firms, uh, quite a few tech firms uh, and international professional service firms are based in Dublin, uh, and we have members from there uh, on, our, on our industry advisory board. And they've hi highlighted two areas that you know, when they're making recruitment decisions that they think uh, programs need to emphasize, uh, and that's business analytics uh, and sustainability. So as we prepare for the next September, we're currently reviewing our programs, looking at the extent that we cover these topics uh, and where we have strengths in these. And, and to that end, uh, over the last year, we've expanded our faculty base so that we have more experts in those two areas uh, to ensure that we have the capacity to, to deliver those programs. I'm proud of our programs uh, and the quality of teaching that we offer in the school. Uh, our faculty and our curriculum innovations receive national and international awards for excellence in teaching. Uh, for example, uh, we re recently received a AACSB Innovations that, that Inspire Award for some uh, innovative curriculum de design in, in our undergraduate programs. And previously, uh, our postgraduate programs, uh, some of our initiatives, I'll talk about one later, but have received QS Reimagine Awards, which describe themselves as the Oscars of education. So, uh, so this is just testament to the quality of the faculty that we have and our commitment to teaching um, and to 
high quality teaching, but also to innovate in how and what we teach. Uh, and we continue to, to do new things every year. This year, uh, we're proud uh, to open a new VR lab in our building. Uh, and we've been using that uh, across the curriculum uh, to allow uh, classes, if you like, engagement simulations around team building uh, and other such things. Uh, during your postgraduate degree here in D DCU Business School, you will have plenty of opportunities to gain practical experience in your chosen study. Uh, and this will include, uh, and this reflects, I suppose, uh, our core commitment to engaging and working with industry across our teaching and our research. Uh, so I mentioned with AACSB accreditation, our recent review panel commended us for the deep interactions between the school and industry uh, and how this, these interactions inform what we teach, how we teach uh, and what we research and how our research impacts those organisations. Okay, so our research, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of those international impact of our research, uh, so it impacts significantly into the academic community, but also it impacts into practice uh, and that's an important part of the ambition of our researchers here. The school engages with industry uh, across teaching and, and across research, uh, and we run programs, for example, just some, some examples. Uh, we've trained over uh, and educated over 400 managers from uh, small and medium sized enterprises as they prepare their organizations for growth uh, in collaboration with the, the government's enterprise development agency. We have a, a dedicated program on innovation and insights into the food in the food sector, uh, which we run in collaboration and cooperation with the board BA, which is tasked with promoting the Irish food industry. Uh, and just not relevant to you, but our undergraduate students typically complete a one-year work placement. Uh, and that's an important part and a distinctive part of our program offering. In terms of our postgraduate programs, uh, I'll just pull out two, two elements that illustrate the industry engagement uh, element. Uh, so, uh, we include a, what we call a practicum project requirement, whereby teams of master students uh, work with a client co company on a business issue that that client has identified. Uh, and that means effectively you graduate from your postgraduate degree with the experience of working with the industry, uh, as well as obviously learning to collaborate with others in your group as you complete that project. Uh, so this is an important uh, part of uh, many of our postgraduate uh, master's programs. Another example of where we emphasize uh, engagement with industry uh, and uh, give you experience of real world business in areas is in a module that we have called Next Generation Man Management that runs over uh, many of our postgraduate programs uh, over the course of the year. And this allows you to shape uh, your own educational experience. Uh, so it's kind of a student led, uh, but we're, we direct it around themes uh, and we kind of get, allow you to sort of engage in external events as a way of uh, completing uh, parts of that assignment. So, uh, and that's just another way that we bring uh, industry and, and real life business scenarios into the classroom. By the time you've completed your studies, and I'm going to wrap up now shortly, but by the time you've completed your studies and graduated from DCU Business School, you should have developed uh, new networks. Okay, you're going to have the opportunity to listen uh, and to meet with uh, people from industry, experts from industry, from our alumni coming in and talking as guest lecturers uh, and supporting uh, our delivery of curriculum. You should have developed both the kind of hard and the discipline specific skills uh, required for employment, but also sort of soft skills uh, that should allow you to uh, what we would describe as hit the ground running uh, when you move into the world of work. Uh, and this is something, and, and this might be important to many of you, what employers tell us about our graduates, uh, and they typically describe our graduates as work ready. So they, when they're when they're hired, they can begin contributing to the organization that they're working in. Uh, also, when you completed your degree here, you'll have a postgraduate degree, as I said, from an internationally recognized university. And that's evidence, some of, the, some of the stuff I've cited already, but we have international partnerships, the recognition of our faculty, the international accreditations we have, our performance on international rankings, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we're a well-respected uh, university internationally. And I suppose the above points, uh, point to something that might be of interest to you, but it's one of the reasons why our graduates are highly sought after in the job market. Uh, and just as a point of evidence around this, DCU was recently ranked 19th in the world for its employment rate in the QS 2020 employability ranking. Okay, so that's kind of not in Ireland, that's uh, globally uh, as an impact. Uh, so that's quite 
significant and it just is testament to what we do uh, what happens in the classroom uh, the design and the delivery of our programs um, and uh, we also know that 97 percent of our alumni uh, are working or within or if they choose to do further study within six months of graduation okay so so employment outcomes are very strong for our graduates the other thing i suppose you should experience and gain uh, you should make new friends uh, new potential work colleagues uh, by working with your classmates uh, in the many sort of hands-on uh, and team assessments and requirements that you, you'll engage with during your postgraduate study here. Also, and I'm sure you, some of you will know, but uh, DCU is in the north part of Dublin city uh, and there's a lot of very nice uh, amenities in the local area and across Dublin and then the, the, the regions around Dublin and stuff like that. So it's a very pleasant uh, work environment. So that's, it from me, I hope that wasn't too fast, but it was just to give you uh, an insight into who we are as a school um, and what what we're doing and what we're trying to do as a school uh, and, and the successes we had and why uh, choosing a postgraduate program at DCU uh, is a good choice. So I'll finish there. Uh, and thank you again. Uh, so I don't know if we just, segue straight in or they just might have to wait uh, a couple of minutes for the for the quarter pass uh, session to start So oh, this is a new system, so I'm not sure. Uh, do I just sign off or somebody else is going to join? Hello, John. Hi, Colm. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Um, um, I think I'm taking over from you. Okay. Uh, and yeah. So there's a few questions in the chat there, and I think somebody else will respond to them there. Uh, so they're not just uh, specific to, to, to me and some of them will be in the some of the, those issues will be addressed in the presentation. So uh, so I'll hand over to John. I'm going to hit stop stream and hopefully that will let John uh, take over. Thanks and good luck. Great. Thanks, Colin. OK, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, John Connolly and um, Dr. John Connolly. I'm an uh, associate professor here um, in DCU. Um, I'm also the chair of the Masters in Digital Marketing. Um, so I'm not going to uh, do a PowerPoint. I'm not going to show you any slides. Um, and much of the information about the program in terms of, I suppose, the content is available online. Um, and rather than repeat that, what I was hoping to do is allow you to kind of determine what you'd like to know. Um, so I very much saw it as a question and answer session. Um, where those of you who are interested um, and cannot find the kind of answers to the questions or uh, concerns you might have online um, or on the DC website can direct them to me. Um, I'm happy to take them in terms of if you uh, if you wish to, as I said, type in the questions or um, give them to me in, a, in, in, in verbally. Okay. DC 526, I don't know if that question DC 526 doesn't apply to me as a question. Um, sorry, I think I think there's a questions coming in that these are not DC 526 has nothing to do with this program. Um, so I, I, I will, I, I suppose if there's no questions, I'll probably give um, uh, or, or what, wait while they come in. No, I can't do finance. I'm sorry. You're going to have to wait for the session on finance. I'm here to deal with digital marketing. Um, one thing I will say about the program, and Colm has alluded to that, um, is the employment opportunities. As, as the chairperson, I'm kind of inundated with companies um, contacting me looking for um, students who are finished or graduates um, with expertise in digital marketing. Um, I've been quite taken by that. 
um, and they come from small and large companies. Um, again, I'm, I'm getting questions for programs I'm not responsible for. I'm sorry. You're going to have to maybe wait for the next session. Seeing business, these these are all questions for other programs. I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait. Okay, um, I've got a firm offer. I see a, a query in there. I've got a firm offer for digital marketing. Um, yes, is there a question for that? If you've got a firm offer um, and provided you meet the language criteria, I think you're you're you can accept. So I'll, I, as I said, I'll, I'll talk about the, the course in general. Um, it's basically made of, up of essentially six, seven modules um, in, in blocks of what we call 10 credits. There's one module that's connected up to what we call a, a practicum or dissertation. Um, and I, I, I suppose the word practicum deserves a little bit of attention. Um, so there's a, a 30 credit module um, called a practicum. And it's a choice you can do a practicum, which is a group project, um, almost like a consultancy project where you have a client firm and you work as a group um, to, to produce a report and conduct research for a client company, which will be sourced. So these are real live cases. OK, um, in addition to that. You will, as I said, um, have the opportunity to be develop skills around market research, which you can kind of then deploy. Okay. And that's kind of a very important part um, of any marketing function. Right. Um, the other part I think that's important here is if, if you do wish to kind of conduct an individual thesis and um, you also have that opportunity. Okay. And um, there's some questions here coming in. I'll just kind of diverge and maybe have a look at these. Um, prerequisites. I mean, there are, prerequisites in the sense that if you haven't fulfilled the criteria, the main criteria in terms of um, a business degree or an equivalent degree, they're the main criteria. But aside from that, there's no prerequisites as such. Um, how long does it take to get feedback on your application for a place? It, it, fairly shortly, it should come within... Um, Sometimes it can be as, as, as quickly as a couple of days. Sometimes it can take a, a week, um, mainly depending when, um, if, if, if I'm not available. Um, Can we understand the module contents? All the module, rather than just go the module contents, all of them um, are available on the DCU website. I don't, it doesn't seem a, a waste of a webinar just to be reading out or telling you what's on. There are six, as I said, um, course subjects um, in, in addition to research methods. Um, all of them have online descriptors with full details. I'm, I suppose I'm the, the custodian of the rules and regulations of the program. Um, and when you go into the DC website, you'll be able to find full details, including some details of the types of assignments that can be um, undertaken in each of these um, particular subject areas. But the program has been designed very much with a focus in terms of technical skills at the end of it. OK, so most of the lectures um, will be very, very strong in the technical side, particularly around um, data analytics. So even when they're not teaching a subject such as data analytics, they're aware of how that feeds in to, um, I suppose, other functional areas, um, such as I, I, what you would see as the tools for um, designing brand messages um, in a digital environment. Um, 
The other thing to note at the moment um, is that the course is generally delivered in terms of assessed, I suppose, in, rather than delivered. Um, it's, it's, it's delivered in the classroom in DCU. Um, it's made up mainly in terms of assessment of what we call continuous assessment. So it's 100% continuous assessment. There are no what we call terminal final exams. Okay. But there are quite a lot of assessments. And that is one area I think that students um, perhaps struggle a bit with in terms of the scale of work sometimes coming at them. Um, so it, it's, it's important to realize that. Um, internship and job opportunities. Yes. Um, well, I don't know about internships that we, in, in, in terms of that we provide them, no. But as a result of your program, um, in terms of graduation, um, I, I have no hesitation in saying um, there there is no shortage of job opportunities whatsoever. As I said, the number of companies that have contacted me um, with vacant positions in the last couple of weeks alone, um, I, I, I just can't even... We, we can't fill them for, for, for companies in terms of being able to direct students to them. Um, so it's a very, very, I suppose, functionally important area at the moment, digital skills. And I think that's what makes the program so attractive. And um, also bear in mind that it's not a huge class. And I think that's that, that can be important in terms of the actual in-class environment. There are not 80 students involved in this class. Um, so it's a much smaller environment and much easier to work in. that query is directed to i'm sorry um and so i think that brings me mainly to i suppose the issues around the program as i said to you digital marketing digital skills um functionally very important in terms of a huge demand for companies and a lot of companies lacking the expertise and they range from small companies to the big big employers that look for people such as google etc facebook um, graduates have gone into the larger multinational firms and they've gone into a lot of smaller business, including digital marketing agencies. So a lot of digital marketing agencies um, have also contacted us looking for graduates. Um, and I should also add that graduates from the program have gone on to start their own businesses. And again, that's often in the area um, in which they can fulfill digital marketing um, expertise and specialize in it and deliver that for um, other companies. Um, there's not much more queries coming in on this. As I said, um, I probably should give a mention about the staff involved. Um, Staff in the program would have a lot of experience and um, very, very skilled. And um, they're also most of them are academic researchers. Um, and so they're, I suppose, they have international reputations as well in terms of being able to deliver in this area and also research um, in the area and, and in terms of bringing knowledge up to date in terms of what you're receiving. OK, and I think that's very, very important to to be aware of as, as well. And um, there's also a, a, a module around strate strategic thinking and marketing at a more strategic level. And that gives people to uh, a level of oversight beyond just the technical skills and expertise. Okay, I don't think we have much more queries on this. Um, I, I don't have much more to say. Um, so I'll, I'll hang on for a couple of minutes in terms of if people have any other queries or questions. Any kind of a, 
of the voice roof requirement? Well, actually, good question. Um, I suppose it's it's become. Uh, <laughs> I, I suppose a laptop is, is is almost like a pencil these days. Um, so, you know, aside from that, no, I I think I think there's nothing uh, there's nothing absolutely essential. But um, and it, and a, a laptop is not always required in the classroom. Uh, that's that's for certain. But I mean it. it it would certainly be part of a digital marketing course one would think some level of technology um, so if I've, I've no further queries I'm going to wrap up you can still send in queries um, that will be dealt with by my colleagues um, and uh, a huge amount of information is available online um, is this full time in the classroom it is full time in the classroom that is correct absolutely Um MacBook Pro is absolutely fine, yes. <laughs> Please share insight into any course that you... Okay, thank you very much for your time today. Um, and uh, as I said, if you have any further queries, um, please let us know. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I hope I'm audible. I hope I'm audible to all of you on the screen. Good afternoon again. So I am Dr. Baitinath Bishwas. I'm the assistant professor of digital business and innovation department. And currently I'm program chairing for the MECB program, masters in e-commerce business. So the program code is MECB BC 506. And I will quickly run you through some of the brief details of the program, some of the modules that are covered in the program and the basic program structure. Then we can face the questions in the last five minutes. I hope it's fine. So my details are there directly given. If you want, you can make a note and if you have any questions about this program, the requirements of the program, you can ask it here in the live stream or you can even send me an email. I would be very happy to answer them. So I'll quickly go to the program structure. The program structure comprises of some year-long modules, which you can see are of 10 credit weightage, and they are of continuous assessment type, as my previous colleague, Professor John Connolly, has already emphasized on continuous assessment. So there will not be any written exams to conduct in these modules, but you would have to go through detailed assessments of multiple weightage to cover these different topics. So most of the topics that are covered typically here would be digital marketing and mechanics and authorship concept, which is common with the MSDM or digital marketing program. Then you have the digital marketing and e-business management, which is a year long course. You have research methods, which is a year long course. And you have data analytics and marketing metrics, which is also a year long course. You have applied web design and development which is a bit on the technicality of designing websites. You have information risk, security, and business analysis, which is also a pen credit and a year-long course. And then you have digital business, which is a five credit weighted and which comprises only in the semester one. And you have the innovation and high technology entrepreneurship module, which is for semester two. Finally, when the semester closes, 
so you would have a practicum which is typically a practical project which comes as a business request and enhancement from our uh, expert clients and students work in groups to solve their real business challenge and it has often happened that students have got final job offers from those clients or they might showcase their successful client practicum project for applying in their jobs so as you understand only in one module that is mp5124 which runs for semester one you have a written exam for the rest of the modules you only have continuous assessment so continuous assessment as it is very flexible and dynamic for the student as well as for the professor but you also have to be very calculative and efficient in terms of handling the assignments because assignments would have a huge pressure on you and you would be expected to complete and submit the assignments on time that would comprise of your weightage in the modules. Any questions on the program structure? You can put it on the live stream chat. I would be happy to answer them. So this is a typical timetable that looks from week seven. So for the week of November last year for the MECB program, this is the typical class structure you would have on an entire week. So the sessions would run for a duration of two hours approximately. So in an entire week, you would be looking at 14 to 16 hours of contact hours with the lecturer. Apart from that, you would have additional work for assignments, submissions, and other academic activities. So we would be expecting a full-fledged involvement from the student's part because this is a full-time course and uh, you must keep in mind while you are applying or if you are thinking to apply that this is a full-time course and a significant amount of academic effort from the student is expected. The cohort of the student group is of a sizable amount so the average number of students in the past few years have been around 35 to 40. So that is a very good number for a conducive learning environment. And there are not large number of students in the class group like 100 or 120, as I already said, it goes up to 35 to 40. And then it is very interesting to have classroom discussions, split the class into groups and continue with the discussions. Some quick glimpses from the modules that will be covered in this program. For instance, MT5161, Risk Regulation and Business Analysis, taught by Professor Valerie Beyonds. So some of the topics that will be covered here are privacy for the organization, GDPR regulation, privacy for the consumers, information security, IT risk management, IT governance. So the assessment component, you can make a special note on this. There will be an individual essay of 50% weightage a group project followed by a group report and class presentation on information risk assessment of a company comprises of 30 percent weightage and finally an individual in-class test on business analysis that comprises of the remaining 20 percent next module is mt5124 which is an introduction to digital business and this has a hundred percent continuous assessment as well which has MCQ and online testing modules going up to 70% and the group work and group project assessment up to the remaining 30%. This module provides students with a strong conceptual foundation by studying in detail the concepts of electronic marketplace, e-businesses, associated business platforms, and technological and societal implications. Another very interesting and highly successful module from Professor Teresa Hogan EF571, the innovation and high technology entrepreneurship. This module has been highly successful among our past graduates who have gone up to employers like Amazon, Deloitte, Ernst & Young, Accenture, Core Apple, Verizon, Google, IBM, and obviously Facebook and LinkedIn. So they have managed roles like business managers, entrepreneurs, analysts, digital marketing specialists, and e-commerce business managers and technologists in multiple roles for this company. As you know, DCU ranks 19th in the world for graduate employment rate according to the US 2020 employability ranking, and it ranks number one in the Ireland across all Irish universities. So this is business school graduate employment rate is about 97% for the graduate outcome survey. So I don't think employability 
should be a question when you are joining for a program. I'd be happy to take your questions now, maybe in the live stream. I have a I have a question from Patricia. What kind of projects you can expect to work during the practicum? I can give you an example of a sample project that I am chairing for a group of students in this semester. So the students are a mix of digital marketing and e-commerce background, and they are having a digital marketing campaign for the client who wants to improve their Google search engine and advertising objectives. They want to have a higher visibility for them of the e-commerce platform in comparison to their competitors. So I hope that answered your question. And the students are coming up with recommendations whether should they go for search engine optimization for the platform or should they go with a customized paid platform like Google Ads. Okay. So there are local businesses as well as there are corporate, large corporations like Accenture and Deloitte who have also given projects to our students. I'd be happy to answer your questions because this is a face to face interaction with the prospective students, as you understand. So for future students and prospective students, or if you have already received an admission offer from our department, I would like to again emphasize on the nature of learning and the size of the classroom cohort, which is ideally conducive for excellent and effective learning, and also the continuous assessment, which is flexible and dynamic for the student as well as the lecturer, provided you are putting in good amount of effort for completing the assignment for that. Look at the questions. We're very happy to answer your questions on this program, NECD, Masters in E-Commerce Business, offered from our DCU Business School. So, Patricia, you have a question. Can I work on a project of my choice or will the projects be allocated? So, practicum projects are actually allocated, but you can have a discussion with your practicum team and department. The clients, the external clients, the businesses outside the university, they ask for an improvement or enhancement in their projects and their departments. And in this way, we take the request. But obviously, there can be a discussion based on your choice, based on the technology you would like to work on.
I will also type in my email ID in the chat box in case you are interested. And I'll be very happy to answer your questions. I'll type in my email ID with the program name and the subject code so that you remember whom to contact for this program. So the best part of doing a master's program in the MECB or as my colleague Professor John Connolly previously mentioned in the MSDM would be that Dublin is the hub for the top digital corporations across Europe and they all have their European headquarters in Dublin. So as you can understand, it is much more easier to grab an internship opportunity here in Dublin from DCU. And as you know that DCU is the number one employer for master's program in Ireland across all Irish universities, according to a 2021 survey. So it would be a very good opportunity if you are planning to apply for MEC. So typically the last year the semester started on the 1st of September and we had a Christmas break with the semester ending in 18th of December and then the post Christmas the autumn semester starts in early January and it will be ending in the first week of February. I hope that answers your question. So for MSc Finance I think you have to see the timetable when the time for orientation is due. So I will stop streaming now and I will make way for my next colleague on the live stream. Thank you again and hope to see you at ECU in the MECP program. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all keeping well. So my name is Declan Curran. So I'm the program chair for the MSC in Management Business and Strategy. So I'm going to give you a short presentation on that. Uh, just to give you a little bit of an overview of what it's about. I'm going to show slides. Yes, uh, so it is going to be uh, uh, information packed 15 minutes. I'll put my slides on the screen. My colleagues will answer the questions for you in the live chat as I will be busy giving you information. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to see if I can find my slides. Uh, I just want to tell you as well that summer has landed in Dublin today in DCU. So I hope it's very sunny where you are also. Uh, so I'm looking for my slides. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yes, that looks like me. Share. Okay. Right. So um, I am sharing my slides now, so I hope you can see those. If they're not visible to you, I hope that my colleagues will let me know and we can rearrange that. So as I say, uh, my name is Dr. Declan Curran. I'm the program chair for the MSc in Management Business and Strategy. My email address is on the screen, so you can contact me if you would like to find out more or ask me more questions. Um, so I'm going to give a little overview of the program. Um, so in the first instance, I guess I just want to give a feel for why one would do this program. So as you probably realize, it's a management program for people with a business background, that's our strategy stream, or a non-business background, that's our uh, management business stream. 
So it's quite career focused then. So it's not so much for people who want to go on and do PhDs, though some of our students do do further study, but it's people who are aiming to enter industry after our program, which runs from August, should I say September to August each year. So uh, there's two sort of real sort of pillars of our program. One is the fact that it's very hands-on and applied and industry focused. And our practicum module, which is worth 20 out of 90 credits in the program, delivers that kind of industry focus. And I'll talk about this a little bit more as we go along. And we also want to kind of fine tune and hone people's um, logistic skills, management skills, skills of organizing coordinating and that's what our next generation management module does and I'll talk a little bit a bit about that in a few moments as we go along. Hello Declan. Yes. Sorry this is Niall McGovern here from the DCU student recruitment team. I'm very sorry for interrupting you. I just want to let you know your slides don't seem to be moving along as you speak in case you have moved to the next slide. Okay, um, I was I, an, the animated. If you'd like to advise me how I should show this, I will start again and just kind of yeah, them all on the Yeah, so I think if you go to, if you stop sharing your screen. And then okay, you share, everybody. So yeah. I hope you don't mind all the problems here, lads. Um, it's funny, we can actually see that now. It's changed to your second slide now. Okay, right. So it's yes. all right. I, I think you're going to, you have to move through, like rather than the full view um, version, as in the PowerPoint, you just go through it as in where the tiles are there and we can see it perfectly. Okay, just one second on that. Um, if you did want to go into presentation mode, there is a way around that as well, I can let you know. Uh, okay, so I can't operate my slides now, I don't believe. Let okay, me just see that. so I think the oh, but now. Uh, yeah, that's moving first, yeah. Okay, very good. So I'm just going to talk to them through like this, if that's okay then. Okay, everybody. Thanks, okay. Stefan. So thank you, Nal, for your help. Uh, so anyway, uh, as I mentioned, um, our program, uh, industry focused, our practical module delivers that. Um, we also focus on the personal development of our students, becoming a manager, project management coordination, and our next generation management module addresses that. And I'll speak about those, both of those in a moment if I have enough time. And I'll talk about employment rates also, and you'll have heard already that for our master's programs, the graduate employment rate is very high. This program is no exception to that. And of the students who've done the program that we survey over a five year period, 96% of them say they find employment within a six month period. So uh, you'll probably have seen on the website that strictly speaking, the academic entry requirements are uh, applicants have to hold a 2-1 undergraduate degree or the equivalent, or a high 2-2. But really what's going on here is that while you have to meet those requirements academically, a lot of this is about the type of character that you are. And we want people who are proactive, motivated characters, who are interested in project management, who are interested in leading, who are interested in bringing people with them, who like group dynamics, who want to work to projects. So a lot of what we do is very much about skills and training to work the project, to bring in research projects, to bring in um, projects within an employment context or in a self-employed context to come up with new ideas and develop those new ideas. So that's very important in terms of what we're trying to do here. So our program isn't somewhere that we can that people can go in out of the rain for the year and hide. Our program is about leading, being active, being involved in it. And we need that type of character. And if you feel you are that type of character and you like that type of challenge, maybe our program is for you. Uh, you'll have seen a lot about the application process already, and you can see all of this on the DC website. I put um, indicative fees on the screen from previous years, just so you have a kind of a ballpark understanding of what the fees are. But I'm the program chair, so I can talk about the academic side of the program. But it's DCU fees office who would answer questions for you about fees. It's DCU international office who would answer questions for you about uh, visas and the like. And it's DCU registry who answer questions about admission criteria and so on. So these are at more of a university level, and I'm talking about the program specifics. Okay, so uh, I mentioned about employment already, about graduate employment, that we have a very high rate of successful graduate employment out of our program. Um, I also have some information on the screen for you, just giving a kind of a breakdown of where our graduates go. Firstly, broad general areas, and then I'll speak in a little bit more detail in a moment. So our program is a master's in management. Uh, so our students naturally then, they uh, migrate into areas such as logistics, project management, marketing, um, accounts management. Some of our students, particularly the strategy students, go into finance and banking and they work with the big five accounting companies. 
and other students go on and they um, develop their own companies in terms of entrepreneurship. So you can see indicative kind of breakdown figures on the screen. They're also in the doubt, just to kind of give you a feel for um, that share of graduate employment across different categories. Our employees, are, sorry, our students, they come from a, a diverse set of backgrounds. We've had students come from everywhere from engineering and the hard sciences to all across the humanities and arts. And I just want to give you a feel for that. So, for example, students who come to us and uh, have come to us in the past and their undergraduate degrees were, say, in education and training. I put some of their employment outcomes on the screen. You can see they migrate into industry roles in terms of um, marketing executives and managing directors and account managers and the like. Similarly, I put students who came to us from an arts background, so they say with a BA in history or a BA in history and geography or history and politics, they come to us because they want to get closer to industry. It's not that they want to forget about their previous skills, it's that they want to marry their previous skills and learnings up with an industry toolkit, which is what we provide. And again, you can see on the screen the types of careers that they that the students have moved into. Again, you can see asset retention specialists, so some very specific financial roles, marketing executive, Occasionally, students go on to do further studies, such as a PhD, um, uh, executive assistant to financial controller, involved in sales and marketing. So again, um, coming from a humanities background and sort of moving into an industry space then. Um, one last um, snapshot on the screen is students who come to us from the hard sciences, so from across a, ra a range of science backgrounds in terms of undergraduate degrees. And you can see on the screen that I list out a, a lot of different degrees, such as computer science, environmental science, animal science. So we got a lot of students coming from the hard sciences. And you can see on the screen then what their employment role was as an outcome of studying with us. And you can see uh, everything from... Um, from uh, support analyst to banking official, uh, business development executive, um, IT uh, risk and assurance associate, um, people working in finance and leasing, commercial analysts. So analyst and consultant are roles that would flow neatly from our program also. So again, just a snapshot, and I'm keen just to kind of give you a feel for the range of opportunities that are there uh, as students come to us, maybe with a business background, maybe not, and they move closer to industry over the course of the year with us. Um, maybe now moving on from employment, I can say a little bit about the structure of the programs themselves. So on the screen, I put a snapshot of the modules in semester one and semester two of the management business program. And the only point I want to make here is that people coming to us in management, into management business, they don't have a business background. And of course, we want to ensure that you have the requisite basics in business. So that's why we, we do cover off accounting and economics and finance and marketing. We provide you with all the introductory concepts in these modules, mostly in semester one, and then we build on them. So we want to ensure that you come out the other end of this program, you're ready for industry, and you have all those key concepts in finance and economics and accounting in place. Things you mightn't have covered before, we don't assume any, anything in advance, you learn them from, from scratch and you learn the important uh, fundamentals of them. So we provide this for you. Uh, our students who do uh, management strategy um, have already uh, taken business related undergraduate degrees, so they don't have to cover finance and economics and accounting with us. And their modules, as you can see on the screen and you can see on the, the website also uh, are much more about strategy and leadership and marketing and management. So there, there's already a business platform in place with those students. And we're building on that in terms of um, uh, management and strategy and leadership. Uh, in semester two, you can see consulting skills, data analytics, uh, innovation and high tech entrepreneurship. So, again, we're just trying to build that that broad platform of um, of management and strategy skills through these modules in semester one and semester two. And we have year-long modules, uh, which I'm going to say a quick word about, next generation management and the practicum. Um, so both of those modules are quite important pro for our program. So that's why I want to say a little bit more about them now. Um, so a good question is, what is a practicum? So it's not an internship. It's not work placement. Uh, it's more like a, a consultancy project where you and a group of, in a student group of four or five work with one of our client companies. And this runs through the entire year. So um, behind the scenes, we develop these projects for our student groups. 
in the first semester running up to December. We have a practicum launch in January where our student groups meet their client company. Then from January to May, they develop the project in terms of its scope of work and research questions and the like. June and July, they gather data and they write up their research piece. And in August, they submit a report and they present their findings to an academic audience and to their client company. So that's what our practicum is about. So that's sort of the schema of our practicum. And, um, you know, in, we have a wide range of client companies, different types of companies, whether it's multinationals, indigenous companies, startup companies, which are very exciting to see how companies get up and running in terms of digital uh, space, in terms of finance, in terms of Internet of Things. We have campus companies here in DCU. And we've other organizations that aren't companies in their own right, but are, for example, chambers of commerce or enterprise bodies that also have industry relevant issues for our students to engage with and to try and um, bring knowledge and recommendations to the company or organization involved. And the topics that our practicum focuses on tends to be issues such as um, firms expanding into new markets and new segments, new product launches, consumer behavior, very important also, marketing strategies of companies and maybe how to refresh and update marketing strategies, issues within the firm, human resource issues, organizational issues, rolling out new technologies within firms. So these are all issues that we could focus on with, in our practicum research as a student groups work with and for a client company. And so the practicum brings that live industry engagement to our program. And the other side of the coin that I mentioned is next generation management. And um, this is very important to us as well, because there's sort of a personal development aspect to this, where you as a student, uh, as one of our uh, students, you get to reflect on how you organize how you manage, how you get people to come with you and work with you and collaborate with you. Uh, so over the course of this, you would develop a set of, of activities, which we call personal development opportunities. You compile written reflections about these opportunities that you've developed into a portfolio. And what this is doing is that you might organize a charity event or deliver a tutorial. And then afterwards, you get to ask yourself, how did that work out? Could I do it better? How did I manage to bring other people with me? How did I communicate what I wanted to achieve in that? And did it work out the way I had hoped? So uh, it's a moment where you can kind of sharpen and refine your skills about how do I manage? How do I organize? How do I interact with people? So industry interaction is one thing, but you as well refining your management skills, that's also very important to us. Okay, so I realize I'm running out of time. So I put the slide on the screen again, just to remind you that, you know, uh, we fare very well in terms of employability. But that said, it's over the course of the year that really you will, you will uh, come to realize the very wide set of employment opportunities that are available to you. So before you begin the program, you mightn't be fully aware of all those opportunities that are there for you. But over the course of the year, you see more and more opportunities to apply for roles. You talk with your colleagues, you talk with our staff. And um, by the end of it, you just have a much better understanding of where you would like to go to in terms of career and what opportunities are out there for you. OK, so uh, I am going to... Uh, end the slide share if I can. I'll stay on the line for a few moments uh, and um, I, I take it that my colleagues may have answered the questions that have that have come in and um, I'm going to type my email address into the chat box here and I encourage you to contact me if you would like uh, to ask me further questions. Um, so hopefully that went. Yes. So that is my email address. You're more than welcome to drop me a line. Um, I can make the slides available if you so wish. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear from you. So hopefully that information has been helpful for you. I realized that I am running out of time and that my friends would like to join in talking about my colleagues talking about their programs and uh, I don't want to hold them up. So uh, I expect that uh, the speaker after me, who is Breed, I believe, will set up now and join in next to me here. And at that moment, then I'll stop screaming. Breed, hello. <laughs> did I convince you? Are you, you joining did. my program? You, you did. Not quite. I'm, I'm here to peddle my own program, but uh, thanks for the welcome, Dr. I, I knew I'd get one person today, and that person is you. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, well, I'm going to leave you carry on. I'm going to stop streaming. Take care, everybody. Okay. Thanks, Declan. 
Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be here. So my name is Dr. Breed Murphy and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the MSc in International Accounting and Business. And I am, uh, like Declan, going to share some slides with you. So please bear with me and hopefully my, my colleagues will let me know that this is hopefully all, all working. So just one minute. Okay, so uh, hopefully everybody can, uh, can can now see my slides. Um, that's great. So the program code for the MSc in International Accounting and Business is DC526. And some of you may already be familiar with that code from doing your own independent research. So I'm going to talk to you just a little bit more about that. I've included my contact details, uh, my email breed.murphy at dcu.ie, should you wish to email me afterwards or should you wish me to, to share the slides with you. So for about the, the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through a little bit about the programme in terms of the overall background, a little bit about the structure and um, some testimonies from prior students or current students who are completing the programme. Talk to you a little bit about some of the careers that the, the graduates embark on and then talk to you about some housekeeping around entry requirements and also in relation to, to the fees and uh, scholarship data. So firstly, just to take a closer look at the, I suppose, the, the genesis and the background for the programme. This is one of our new, our relatively new business uh, programmes in the, in the business school and it's effectively a conversion type programme. So what it does um, is it accelerates uh, students who may wish to pursue a career in accounting and business um, towards fast tracking along that pathway. It combines a number of different modules, which we'll take a closer look at and runs for one, one full year. So it was a full time program and runs over three semesters beginning in September and, and culminating in the, the uh, following August. So what students are effectively doing when they embark upon this degree is that not only are they gaining a master's degree, a level nine award from, from a, a double ACSB accredited university, but they're also gaining some generous professional accounting exemptions. So I'm going to talk to you a bit more about, about those in just a minute. And ultimately the focus of the program is on the profession and on, on embarking on a professional career within obviously the accounting domain predominantly, but also gaining an academic, um, a, an academic qualification with a level nine masters, but it also has an industry focus. So following on from Declan, from what Declan talked to you about in relation to the practicum module, again, there's a, a practicum focus within this particular program also. And just at the bottom of my introductory slide here, I have a quote from ACCA highlighting that the, the combination of the business and the technical and accounting elements of the program equip students to progress along a number of different career paths. So while accounting is, is a focus, obviously being within the title of this, there's also strong um, value add in relation to employability across a number of other business domains as well. So I'm going to come back and touch on that shortly also. So to provide you with a little bit more then in terms of the, the structure of the programme. So the programme is effectively a culmination of both accounting, which are our modules here in black, and a culmination of a number of business focused modules, which are the modules here in red. The overall number of credits for the level nine program is 90. 45 of those credits are accounting focused in black and 45 of those credits are business focused in red. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the accounting focused modules initially. So these these span a number of different areas and essentially they, they span across three main strands, if you like. So the first of those is around the financial accounting and financial reporting domain. The second is in relation to management accounting and the third is in relation to finance and financial management. So in relation to financial accounting, many of you may be familiar with this. This is effectively the, the type of accounting that gets reported in the company's annual report. So essentially what students learn within these um, financial accounting focus modules is to understand the regulatory aspects, the landscape of accounting, uh, what is required by statute and how to prepare, evaluate and interpret that information, which then gets reported in the external domain. So there's a first semester module and a second semester module, which looks at this overall um, area within the accounting uh, modules. 
The second focus is then in relation to management accounting. And this is the type of tech, um, sorry, uh, technique and so on um, that students will gain in relation to supporting management to better run their business, both in terms of strategic running of a business and operational running of a business. So this spans across a number of different areas, including costing, planning, control and decision making. So all the while looking to provide relevant information to support management to make decisions. And this is quite a different focus to the level of information that gets reported to the external environment. The third area of focus then within the accounting area is in relation to finance. So this is looking at how companies finance themselves, how they make their investment decisions, how they can decide on implementing in the best possible way, the overall strategies of the entity and making sure they gain a return on that, because that is where most companies um, or many operations that are our, our, our graduates ultimately seek employment, uh, seek to do to, to, to make a profit. So with three different areas and three different strands within accounting, these are very, very focused. And the, the, the main reason for that being is that they're focused around professional exemptions. So all of our modules in accounting are focused around gaining specific exemptions with the professional accounting bodies. And on this slide here, I'm just highlighting some sample exemptions with both ACCA, the Global Accounting Body and Chartered Accountants Ireland. So those of you who are already thinking about embarking on a career in accounting and about undertaking various um, studies with the professional accounting bodies will probably be familiar with these. So this is, I suppose, where our, our programme positions itself in the context of each of those professional bodies. The other arm of the programme then focuses on business modules. So these are the modules that I had highlighted in the overall structure in red. So we have three main areas of focus here. The first of those is around data analytics. And as, as you're all aware at this stage, we live in an information age. So it's really important in the business context to be able to sift through information, whether it's structured or unstructured, to organize that information in order to make the best decisions that are possible. So one of our core modules is focused very much around, around data, data visualization, data structuring and data interpreting. The other two modules then are focused around next generation management and our applied practicum module. And while I have slides on these, I don't want to dwell on these too much because Declan has already just given you some really good uh, food for thought and some good explanation of what both of these modules are about. So I'll just run through the, the, the slides, but I'm going to, to move ahead pretty quickly. So the NGM module, as Declan highlighted, spans um, around a number of different strands or different activities. And ultimately, it's to position our graduates to continue to develop and to position themselves in their career in the marketplace and the like. While the practical module then is a, an applied research project, which is effectively a capstone, a the capstone module for the um, for the program. And again, Declan has just talked you through a number of different elements and um, in relation to this particular module. So I'm 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 happy to share the slides and happy to deal with any questions, but I really don't want to go over the the, the same ground that Declan has already covered. The other areas that I, I I want to to I suppose bring to your attention are just in relation to employability. So. While this is quite a new program, we only have two years of graduates to date, and um, we are finding that our graduates are being placed. They're being placed largely within professional service firms, with accounting firms, but also in accounting and finance roles within business. To date, we found that the bulk of our graduates are pursuing careers in accounting and are embarking on a professional qualification pathway. So again, we are so new, I suppose, in terms of the program and that's sort of the, the, the main trend that we have seen um, to date. But there is scope for our graduates to enter into different um, into different business pathways also. And again, I suppose mirroring what Declan would have talked to you about in relation to the, the masters in, in management and the business management strand, our graduates will be very much able to pursue those pathways also. Again, a number of our speakers today have already talked to you about the, the employability and our very, very strong scores in terms of, uh, of our student placements as well. So again, I don't want to dwell too much on that. And again, you've already been, been um, hearing about the different employers, the, the global names and the, the more local names that our, our graduates uh, go, go to work with. 
then maybe just to move on to some, um, I suppose, some some uh, testimonies uh, from some of our prior students. We have some really, really good feedback from our students to date and mindful of the fact, I suppose, that the programme has been running through the COVID, uh, through the COVID times with really, really positive testimonies from our students. And again, um, there are various uh, resources and various clips that you can um, find on, on the web page. So you can find out a little bit more about those also. Then just moving on to our entry requirements, the entry requirements for the program are an upper second class honours award, um, a level eight uh, honours award in any discipline. So there is no prerequisite to have any accounting or business previously. All of our modules will effectively start um, start at, at ground zero and develop. But the, the pace of the the pace of the modules is fairly rapid. So again, just to be mindful of that, that it's it's quite a busy um, and intense year for, for our students. For any students who may be applying um, externally or from outside Ireland, there are also English language requirements and they're covered in some good detail on the DCU University uh, web pages. And I think also covered today are the, the, the various fees and scholarships for the programme. So again, all of that information is, is available on the, the university and the school web pages. So that's that's pretty much our, our, our whirlwind. Uh, the only other thing I just wanted to bring to your attention was that for students um, from countries outside the EU, there are other visa options in terms of uh, pursuing a career in accounting resulting from a programme like this. So just to bring to your attention the, the, the stamp on A, and again, lots of information that, that can be shared on that also. Okay, so I'd like to, to thank you very much for attending my presentation. I am very happy to take any questions you may, you may have. I'm just going to hopefully make sure I have stopped my, my sharing. Okay, so very happy to take any questions that you might have for the last the last few moments. I'm just going to share my my email address just on the, the chat here. So again, very happy for any students who may have questions. Um, to 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 get in touch with me. Um, so just looking at the, at the questions. So I'm just going to work from the, from the the bottom up. Um, does this course include other countries for to other countries for education purposes? Well, the program is a level nine master's award, so it would have it would have um, international equivalency. Just going to look at another question. The ACCA website only shows four exemptions with respect to the course. The, there are actually six exemptions, so I will I, I will double check on that. But there, there are six exemptions, and our students who have graduated from the program to date have gained six exemptions. Um, let's look at other questions. Can two twos be considered? Um, Yes, they can be considered, but there there would need to be a compelling case, I suppose, um, to 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 warrant uh, a place on the program. But they could certainly be considered. So, any prior experience or any prior uh, work experience or any exposure to accounting previously would obviously be be very very helpful to that end. Um, just going to to just pop up and see are there any other any other questions. Um, yeah, just in terms of the background, just to Amjit's uh, the item there, we have students from a number of different backgrounds coming on to our program. Also, we've had uh, students who have had al already had careers in other areas. We've had students who have careers in the, the medical field and um, in the nursing field and um, students who have coming from, again, engineering backgrounds, science backgrounds and so on coming onto the program. So, again, a number of different, I suppose, areas of, of expertise there. Um, Sidan, just looking at your question in relation to the scholarship requirements, there are a number of different uh, avenues of scholarship available. And what I would suggest you do is you have a look onto the DCU University uh, web pages and look into the scholarship opportunities. So it's, it's, it's really well organized. You can, you can dip in um, and find a number of different avenues there. And if you have any more specific questions in relation to anything that I, um, I discussed in relation to scholarships today, please, please pop me an email. So breed.murphy at dcu.ie. Okay, so I'm very, very conscious of the time. Um, I'm very conscious that my colleague, uh, Julie Burtz, wants to also come and talk to you about the, the, the Masters in Accounting. Um, so if you have any questions, please pop it into the chat box. Um, otherwise, hopefully, uh, Julie will, will now take you through some of the workings of the, the MSc in Accounting programme.
Hi, Breed. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So I'm just um, going to pop off. Is that OK? Um, I think I've just dealt with any of the specific questions I could see there. So um, I'll, I'll hand over to you. Great. Thanks a million. And you can hear me anyway. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Yes. Thanks, Julie. Yeah. Thanks a million, Breed. Talk to you soon. OK. Hi, everyone. Um, I am going to kick off. My name is Julie Burtz. I'm the program chair for the MSc in accounting, and I'm going to share a few slides with you. So I will just share my screen now. And I hope we're good to go. Okay, so my name uh, is here on the screen and everything for you, and my email is there at julie.burtz at dcu.ie. And I'm delighted to be here with you and to have the opportunity to share with you why I think you should study at DCU and take our master's in accounting. So I'm going to give you my five top reasons for coming to DCU. And, uh, and then I'll go through the entry requirements and our modules, and I will address any questions at the end. So my first reason, and I think it's the most important reason for you, is your student experience. So our students enjoy opportunities here where they can develop and they can thrive in an environment where we really do nurture talent, we value diversity, and obviously we encourage individuality. So you really get an opportunity to learn about yourself and learn about where your strengths are and maybe skills you need to develop and just to feel safe being you. Everyone else is already taken, as they say, so why not just be yourself? And then, of course, along with that, you're going to um, uh, develop a really strong academic skill set. So when you leave us and enter into the world, you're very aware of your strengths and what you can bring to society in the global world. And you're also aware of areas that you continually um, develop and work on. And we're going to here on the Masters in Accounting, we will develop your communication skills, we will develop your critical thinking, we'll make sure that you're a team player while also being a leader, and we'll make sure that you're comfortable with change and that change is normal uh, to you and there's you're not phased by it. And again, really to show you how important the student experience is, I'm going to share some testimonials here from our students and it shows you how excellent our lecturers are and how we really do value the student faculty interaction here in DCU. So we've a great rapport with students and um, students are very happy to share their knowledge and staff work with them etc. And you can see that we have small class sizes and that students really enjoy their experience here and it really is a lifetime opportunity experience for the year. The second reason I really think you should study your MSc in accounting here with us in DCU is our reputation and our international accreditation. You're going to study in a business school that's ranked in the top 5% of the world's business schools. Um, what a privilege and honor that is and to have that on your CV. And we also um, carry a number of exemptions which are internationally recognized as well. You have your Chartered Accountants Ireland, you gain CAP 2, you'll gain exemptions in ACCA from F1 to F9 and with the Irish Tax Institute you'll gain your exemption from stage one. So you'll have all of these exemptions and then you still have your level nine internationally recognized master's qualification on your CV which of course will help set you apart from other um, colleagues etc. My fourth reason is to show you the success of our students and by joining us here in BCU, you are guaranteed to go on to do great things really and the success of our students is here to see. Last year Mary McCabe came first in FAE, Caroline Keeley was first in FAE in 2020, these are the Chartered Accountants final admitting exams, Daniel Maguire was placed joint sixth in FAE and then we also have success in the tax exams where Annie and Caroline were also placed. So you really are 
giving yourself and building the foundations for a great future by studying here with us in DCU. And obviously my last fifth uh, reason why you should study with us is our industry um, relationship and the recognition we get from industry. Our students, our graduates are hugely sought after by industry and even here just in this um, testimony you can see and hear from a partner who studied on the MSc in accounting with us and still um, really illuminates here how the skills um, the skills that you develop in the MSc in accounting will stand to you throughout your career. And I've heard that from a number of partners who studied in DCU, how they are amazed at how their skills have not um, waned or anything, and uh, they just continue to thrive in the business world. So really, there are my five key reasons for why you should come join us here in DCU for our Masters in Accounting. And now I'm just going to take you through, because I'm conscious of time, the entry requirements. So you do need a 2-1 honours degree in accounting or a business specialism. And you also need to hold CAP1 exemptions from Chartered Accountants Ireland. So that's a key thing that you need to, be, to hold is that exemptions from Chartered Accountants to be eligible for a place on our MSc in accounting. Now the structure to take you through this, it is a year long program and really I suppose not fully 12 months, but it goes from September to the end of June. And it's a very busy uh, year for you, but it's enjoyable and you are challenged and um, you will learn an awful lot and you'll develop a lot of insight into your own skills and abilities, etc. And you'll make a lot of friends and you'll obviously make uh, colleagues, friends and colleagues for life. Um, so here you can see we cover auditing, managerial accounting, international financial accounting, tax, accounting, sustainability and society and research and professional portfolio and data analytics as well. So you really are covering such a broad range that you're definitely going to have certain interests that you're going to be particularly interested in. Um, and again, you can see there the breakdown between um, what's the final exam and what's continuous assessment throughout the year. And some of the modules are year long and some are semesterized. Again, this is all available on the website, but please feel free if you have any questions um, to drop me an email. The program is obviously um, there's prizes on it. If you get the best overall result, EY will award a prize prize on graduation. There's also a prize for the best research and professional portfolio. And there's also a prize for the best result in tax. Now, regarding fees and scholarships, again, our fees for the EU and non-EU, and we have scholarships for DCU alumni, and we also have the Excel scholarship. So if you aren't a past DCU student, you can avail of the Excel scholarship. And these um, scholarships are um, available. You can read more about them on the website or drop me an email and I can send you a link. Employability here. To be honest, on the MSc in accounting, all the students are employed at this stage. They're, they're ready to go for their contracts. Uh, they've them all set up. And uh, that's the other thing to bear in mind if you're at your undergraduate studies at the moment, you could look to getting sponsorship for the MSc in accounting by a firm. And obviously, when you graduate from us, you know, you're leaving with 16,000 other uh, business school graduates. So you're going to have a big alumni network to pull from. And obviously, then you have the university alumni as well. So future employers here, again, it's really, you know, uh, it's, it's endless. It'll all depend what you decide you're really going to focus on. Are you going to be a financial controller or do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to specialize in becoming a partner? Whatever it is. Um, and that's the joy of taking your master's, gaining your level nine. You're exempt from your cap two. You can train in an, in the office um, for three years and gain your experience and decide, hmm, okay, these are the areas I really like um, now having worked for the three years as well and taken any exams you're going to take. So the application process, again, uh, it's online and you can apply on our system here. And 
the most important thing is that you stay connected with us. And thank you very much for listening. I am going to stop sharing so that I can move to see if there are any questions. Um, and I will address them now.